among us. Spiritually, we have come to Jesus and what Jesus did when I just get down to verse number nine. The idea is that I, I, what Adam and Eve did, it, 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 I don't have to go back to the garden. I don't have to go there and fall and, 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 and have God put sleeping sword that locked me up. But, but I can be brought back and recreated. And that's what Jesus did. So the idea of the death of Jesus, what he did, he recreated us. And so when you look at the passage in verses number 9, the Bible said we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angel. The Bible said he what? Through the suffering of death and the crown and the glory. The Bible said he gave it all back to him in honor. And then the Bible said by the grace of God that we should what? He should take death forever. And then the Bible said, Brother Jay, read it, the Bible said. And it became Jesus. Who all things. Who all things. Notice about who all things. And bringing many sons back. No, no, that number one, we lost because of sin and because of Adam and Eve. And, and we lost all the glory. We lost not only our glory. We not only lost our crown. We lost all. which is the idea of the earth. What happened on this side of life, then what's happening is that God brought our crown back. God brought our glory back. God brought our crown back. And that's why, that's why you and I have got to understand that I've been recreated. Not to be crushed. Things don't crush me. Bills don't crush me. My life I don't crush me. I'm not going to feel bad now. Why? Because I have been recreated. I'm not going to let this world crush me. Why? Because I've been given glory. I've been given a crown, I've been given all of us again. I'm seeing, I'm seeing in the church that so many people are not feeling their uniqueness in you. We're sad, we're down and out because of the fact we forget sometimes when we read the word, we read the word just enough to give us a little, little boost. See, we're looking for a boost for one, one, one time day only. We live day by day for a boost. When you can live for eternity by what you now God to get in your life, and it is in you. You have that supersonic power for the rest of your life. You ain't got to be putting and snatching for boosters. Right. When God has betrayed you, nothing ever be crushed. So when God speaks in this word, know what he says here. He says, I want you to drop your mind down now in verses number 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 10. One more time, Brother Jay. He said, Brother, we came from him all things. The Bible said, to bring many sons to glory, to make the captain of their shepherd, and he becomes that captain now, to a, a, a trailblazer. And he says, what, Brother Jay? Perfect. And he made it through perfect suffering. Yes, sir. But here's the catch, here's the catch. When we look at this concept about being uh, recreated but not crushed, you don't understand that when God died on Calvary, he really brought us back to, 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 to the God of Eden, which means he really brought us back to, to the church. When he brought us back to Eden, he really brought us back because of our death and because of what he did and what he died. And our death in baptism, when we come up, then he renewed us. What he was what he said, he recreated us. In other words, what we lost in Eden, we gained back in the church. So the church is none other but new Eden. It's just a new situation that God says, now don't be crushed by things. In other words, when God puts us in Eden, we're not supposed to be running around here and letting things and struggles get us down that we cannot make it formally every day in our issue. Now, if you bring something on your own self, you have to deal with that issue because why? Because God has given you the power to deal with those issues. But see, when issues are not dealt with, what happens? You allow yourself to be crushed, and, and, and we really fall. You should not be controlled by your crush. Not the crushes of your issues. So when Jesus talks about this concept, what he's trying to do is build us up. But we will not give up. Now, the Bible says, if you look at it, he said, now, here's, here's the pattern now. Now, watch, because there, there are four things you got to get here. Number one, suffering is, is no problem because, see, I can go through my suffering because I've been recreated not to be crushed. See, if I've been recreated, then I'm not going to be crushed, so suffering don't crush me. I will suffer. Now, suffering is a matter that God uses only to make me stronger. That's why Jesus said in verses number, number 11, now, watch verse number 11 that the Bible said. The Bible said, both. He that sanctified it. Now watch that. Jesus became the sanctifier. Yeah. In other words, I'm sanctified. I'm high up. He did what? He sanctified me. And he then the sanctified. They all won. Yeah. And you know what he's claiming, don't you? 
He's claiming now that we're on the same land that the, that the Christ is. Yeah. Right. Now, I don't know if you got that. Right. See, every day you live and every day you live, you should understand that your relationship now in Jesus, if you live right, if you're doing it according to his will, that God will put you on the same relationship as Jesus. The Bible says the sanctified, and I know this is a, this is a strange language here. You know why it's strange? It's strange because, number one, you don't normally see the teacher on the same level as the student. You didn't get it. You didn't get it. See, 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 Jesus, what he did, he, he put the student and the teacher on the same level. In other words, what Jesus did, he made me just as important as himself. Right. And he said, look here, I am, look, look, read, read it. He said, both, that's why we're looking at the word both. He said, both, both, he that sanctified and that which is sanctified. Fuck! 
You don't want the gain. You see it? Now, that's a statement he made. Now, he moved from the statement to the standing. All right. Now, no, 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 no. Why was he moved to the, to, to, to the standing? Because here's the thing. And here's the thing you got to see. You and I have got to understand we've been recreated. Amen. Not to be crushed. Right. Now, I know that's kind of hard for some of us to believe because we feel like, well, we all going to go through some tr struggle. Well, we will go through struggle, but the struggle don't crush us. Because there's a new spirit that God has placed in us not to be crushed by, 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 by the things in this life. See, those things don't affect us anymore. See, the interesting thing about, about, about this whole passage here is that there's still, whenever there's fear in our life, the word is phobia, drop down to verse number 15 if you don't mind. Whenever there's fear in our life, you've got to understand that it causes problem with us. A lot of us don't want to admit it, though. A lot of us fear a lot of stuff. And our fear comes because we have not progressively, we have not progressively understood our relationship with Jesus. Fear is phobia. Fear is intimidation. Now, phobia, there's many words, words for fear. There's a fear that the Bible talks about. It's not phobia. It's a word that talks about our reverence to God. But this fear in verse 15 is a phobia of intimidation. Uh, in other words, we are intimidated. We are scared by a certain problem that we have. We are scared, and it's scared our relationship that we cannot stand and fight for our spiritual walk. All right. So what's God trying to uh, say to us today? Well, the proclivity of this dialogue, if you look at it, he is saying that it is never where the teacher uh, should, 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 should be able to say that a student cannot stand strong with the teacher. Right. We should be intimidated by a teacher who's teaching us the word and telling us how we ought to be standing strong. But now, the issue always around the word here. Why? Because even at times, we become lonely. When we sin, we become lonely. When we sin, we become out there by ourselves because God does not come to our aid. Why? Because we do not let God's whole power work in us. Yeah. Well, where's the fear? Now, the fear is in us. And, and, and you know, we hate to be alone. And, and not only that, but we ourselves, we get comfortable sometimes with that type of idea that it becomes immune to us that sometimes we do not even walk according to the will of God. Amen. Now, now, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. We often come to a conclusion. What conclusion? We come to a conclusion that not, not, not what, what, my courage, my courage is gone, and therefore I cannot overcome certain things. And so, therefore, uh, it becomes a familiar concept in our life that faith projects progressiveness, but fear projects weariness. Uh -huh. I become weary because, number one, I have fear. Yeah. I get tired. I get tired. I get tired of certain things. But the thing that you understand that when you look at the word of God, drop your eyes down to verse 14 now, and watch the statement. Because what God does is give you standing. You gotta understand that God, when he gives you standing, he knows that if he gives you the power to stand with according to Jesus, you will, you will not be crushed by anything in life. Right. Because you understand your rec, your recreation of his. Yes. But nobody says, somebody give me a reading in verses number 14. He says, for much now, not Paul. You see the word for much? Yes. The word is really sense. You know why? Why is it sense? Because something has already happened. Right. Right. Read verse number 11. He said, the seed that's sanctified and he that are sanctified, they have already become. So you got to be no more here. So when God be creator, ain't no here in this thing about it. Yeah, I'm going to give you a pick of fact. 
this passage in John, it said, there is no fear in love. When we truly understand the love of God that he has for us, there's no fear. I'm afraid when I know God loves you. Somebody struggling, some woman struggling with a man to walk out of her life. What are you struggling with when God got a real love for you? The 
Bible said, indeed, he took present indicative miracle. He volitioned, he took, and he kept taking. What did he take? He took not as an absolutely as an act. He took not the nature of angelic being. Right? And I think everybody knows that angelic being are uh, closest thing to God. Yes. Jesus said, I didn't take the nature of angelic. Right. I came down just as you were. Come, 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 come here with somebody. Come here. Come. Somebody come here with me. I, I, I step down. Uh, if, you, if you don't mind, for, indulge me for a moment. If I'm Jesus and I have come down and I'm not on his level, All right. everything he's going through, every problem that he had, every struggle that he got, everything that he's trying to do, everything he has done, I come down and guess what? I've gone, I've gone through everything he's gone through. Yeah. Because I came down just to see. And then what did your doctor visit? I came down to find out what was it that you were dealing with? Yeah. What is your struggle that you were dealing with? And Jesus said, I came down because everything you dealt with, I've done. Yes. Then he turns around and looked me in the eye and said, all of us now, and he says, what's your excuse? Yeah. Read the passage. Wait a minute. Read the passage again. He said, of an angel, that means that I still have power. Right, right, right. Because angelical beings are spiritual creatures. Yeah. I can fly here, I can fly there, I can do it, but now God made me a little lower right. than angel. Right. In other words, he brought me down here, help this SMV, that look here, if I see something that I, that, that I shouldn't have, if I see it and I look at it long enough, I can get a desire and I can want it. We'll go in my compartment, give me a gun, rob the bank, yeah. give me about a hundred thousand, what will I? If my desire is there, right. or if the desire is there, maybe uh, I see somebody else, even my wife may not have it, but maybe, maybe I see something that my wife is not able to fulfill. Yeah. Everything that you have, you say you desire, God says, I'm going to make it And he said, and he said, and he said, there's no excuse why you did this. But you did. Well, why why? Well, because I was recreated not to be crushed. And why are you saying that? Because I took your part. I took all of your struggles. Don't worry, but 
be accountable. Amen. See, the spiritual nature of Jesus calls us to be accountable. Amen. And so when Jesus makes this statement here, and we get ready to come to a clear conclusion now, Jesus says here, he said, I became a merciful and faithful high priest. Yeah. And the faith pertaining to God to do what? To reconcile, to make friends again the sins of the people. Now here's the last verse. Look at verse 18. What does it say? For in that he himself in that, suffered being tempted. What did he do? He was tempted. In that he was tempted. And he what? What did he say? Now he's able to secure those. Yeah. In other words, if I'm a child of God, now he's able, he has enabled me not to be crippled or crushed yeah. or to be tempted. And things that I'm tempted with, he gives me the strength to be able to go over there. Yeah. The temptation does not have to bring me down. Yeah. You and I are battling with something in our lives. As I come to an end, and get ready to go to my seat. We're battling with certain things in our lives. This fight is ongoing. Yeah. Some of the fight we brought on ourselves. Yeah. And the absence of our security, we, we feel insecure because of that. We are battling too long. And we're not giving God the battle. And if you're going to battle that long, you ought to at least, you ought to at least believe that God can take care of you. You ought to understand that your, your, your strength in Jesus and your exegesis of God will give you the belief system in order to get your problem and your issue dealt with. You see, you see, see, God, when God talks about in verses number 18, if you don't mind, let me close out. The Bible says, if God, he himself has suffered being tempted, he's able he is able to what? He is able to secure those that are tempted. So whatever it is that you are tempted with, remember now, God has given you prescription. Why do you go to the doctor and get prescription when you know that, 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 that somehow whatever it is that were aiding you and painting you and you found out that you were trying to last with that pain, but you found out it was so unbearable that you went to the doctor and the doctor, he wrote you a prescription. You went to the, the, the pharmacy and they gave you the, 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 the prescription and said, feel this stuff and take it. before you go to bed. And your pain is going to hurt. It's going to be going to bed. But God tells us in his word, take two of Jesus here, take two of Jesus here. He, 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 actually, he actually gave us a prescription. And when he gives us a prescription, uh, he's saying that uh, we can change, and the prescription can change the process. Uh, he can change your ways, he can change your attitude, he can change your attitude. See, 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 I've got to operate within the power of the prescription of God. Yes. That means that if I'm recreated, then God is showing me that I don't have to be crushed. Amen. So what is God saying? My battle with my children, I've got to operate without fear. The battle with my job, I've got to operate without fear. The battle with my life, I've got to operate without fear. The battle with my wife, operate without fear. The battle with my husband, operate without fear. My family, operate without fear. Siblings, operate without fear. Self-work, operate without fear. did not take the prescription. If you believe in God, you're going to have to take the prescription. Because if you take the prescription, it's only then can you manage. It's only then can you manage the problem. It's only then can you be able to overcome where you won't be crushed by the issue that you're going through. You will always be crushed by things if you don't take the prescription of God. And the description of God simply says that he recreated you not 